a psycho. A psycho, psycho with a pastor's Let's heart. Let's start this thing quick. That's almost everyone. <laughs> yes. That's almost a everyone. Therapist <laughs> with okay. a pastor's heart. Three, two, one. Hey, welcome to the Bub and Bob Show, where we have rare conversations with compelling Christians. I am Bub Coons over there, Bob Matosian. Welcome to the Bub and Bob Show in these weird times, my friend. It's actually the Bob and Bub Show today. Okay. Because <laughs> I plan on interrupting quite a bit. I'm sure you are. You want to sit here? I can run. I can run the board. No, no, no. You don't trust me over there. I do, do you? not. Nor trust Nor do me. I trust you over here. <laughs> so it works out really well. Okay, so I'll shut up now. I'm okay with your name being above mine okay. in any day. So I mean, this is this has been kind of strange, right? This yeah. whole thing for about when did it start? Three weeks ago, kind of in earnest. Yeah. If today is what April second or third. Yeah. And we started, we shot Ed, Ed Nilsson a few weeks ago. We aired that one, and this is right when the coronavirus happened, and he had a lot of. Uh, a personal loss. Yes. And yet he said to God be the glory. And then and then it got bad, so we said, "Hey, why don't we get Pastor Mike Fabars in here to answer some of these questions people are asking from a biblical perspective?" Yes. Then last week, we had Vicky Girardi on who had lost all her limbs, but in all of this we're talking about there there's the right perspective to have no matter what if as a believer. Yes. And then trying to give hope and reach out and love to the non-believers so they can have the hope of heaven that we all have. And so today Today. We're going to get a little more personal with 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 people. You know, they're locked up. They're they're scared. So we got a guy, this man right here, Randy Powell, who's a psychotherapist with a pastor's heart. With the pastor's so we're gonna heart. we're gonna actually look with to, an emphasis on psycho though. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, psychopath. Yeah, you got to work with that, that last part uh, because we, we we really want to talk about what what this is doing to the psyche, to the mm-hmm. person, right? Mm-hmm. And we we've. Uh, so we want to get really narrow in, in, in some of these questions. Thanks for being here. Mm-hmm. Thank uh, you for really, having me. Really appreciate being here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, how long you've been doing it, and so some people think I just didn't grab you off the street. And go. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I just let you know that I'm here under protest because Bob said I had to come. Yes, so, you know. that's how this happens most of yeah. the time. Yeah. So however, like however the, weddings. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So however this goes, it's his it's fault. Just to, so yeah, we yes. establish guilt yeah. at the start. Amen. Okay, yeah. good. We're we we're got good there. To blame. <laughs> well, um, I know you always like to start also with uh, telling people's uh, how they were yeah, saved, and yeah. I, I think that would tie in better that's to great. explain what I'm doing, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. I, uh, I was raised in a home that um, was a Christian home. Everyone, uh, four of us, I, uh, four children, I'm the baby in the family of okay. four, and uh, my mom and dad loved the Lord, taught us how to be loving mm-hmm. to one another. Uh, and at five years old, I climbed a tree and started preaching to my neighbors nice. with the uh, Sunday school stories. Nice. And so I knew I'd be a minister, and mm-hmm. I have we have a long line of ministers oh, in our family. Yeah. My de- mom and dad were not. They were Sunday school teachers. Yeah. They were yeah. on the board. But um, I still come from that lineage. And so throughout my growing up, I, uh, I would walk away and mm-hmm. uh, walk back walk away, walk yeah. back, yeah. and just have the journey yeah. that most yeah. of us have. Oh, that I is, thought this was going to be another one of those, oh, I was, after a life of debauchery, I was five years old and yeah. I came to Christ. At seven, I came to Christ and <laughs> yeah. never looked back. Nothing went wrong. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, neither no, of those. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Untrue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was uh, head of the Sunday school and, and youth group, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I was an athlete in college and high school, and at school, I would act one way, and at home, oh, I'd be another person. Gotcha. So I was in this dichotomy yep. on a regular basis and battling internally mm-hmm. this call and this desire to present the Lord to the world and, and this reality of my human drive that pulled me away. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. battling this, this knowledge of what's eternal and what's finite, yep. knowledge that I have these drives that... Uh, I want others to like me. Yes, 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 as we all do. Let's as be, we let's all be do. honest. Yeah. Yeah. And yet on the other side was the call that was saying, right. God loves me and I know there's a purpose. So throughout my upbringing I, and my family, I uh, would climb the tree regularly that preach. I preached at times to my uh, elementary school, junior high friends. Uh, I got drafted back in 1972 and wow. went in the Army. Okay. Um, in the Army, I lived a more straight life than all the others, so they would call me pastor. I'd have okay. my Bible. They'd yeah. ask me to pray for them, and then they'd make fun of me for not drinking okay. or not going yeah. with them. And then I'd go with them to parties and activities, and I wouldn't drink. They'd buy me dinner, and I'd carry people home. That's nice. <laughs> triage. You're always helping people. Always helping. Yeah, yeah. 
So for me, it's always been this this caring for others while having my own internal battle sure. of saying, what am I? Yeah. Am I a human that has issues and problems, or am I a minister that is called with an anointing that has power and, and the authority? Answer is yes. And the answer right? is yes. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. yes, I am both. Yeah, I am both, and, yeah. and we all are. Yeah. And that's the dilemma we're regularly facing. You guys talked yeah. about the dilemma uh, a couple times yeah. ago when I was listening. And I've enjoyed listening, by the way. It's been really fun. That's good. Um, You're the guy who likes the show. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. I'm your follower. I'm your uh, one guy. We're up to to one. (laughs) (laughs) And so the uh, caring for people while also trying to uh, say, who am I? Mm -hmm. And I've always had people come to me and and tell me their problems. Right. And And I wanted to help. So when I went to Vanguard to go to school... And I got out of the army and I said, I want to be a minister now formally. Mm-hmm. And I went to Vanguard and I was studying to be a minister. I, I realized standing up front preaching, I would preach to the masses. Mm-hmm. So if I was preaching to the masses and I said to them uh, and talking about being lazy right. and saying, we need to work, we're called to work, we're called sure. to be uh, responsible and accountable... The people who were hard workers would say, yeah, I yeah. need to work harder. Yeah, yeah. We love this guy. <laughs> they love it, yeah. but they also would work harder. Yeah. The ones yeah. who are lazy said, I'm doing enough. Yep. They wouldn't listen. Yep. And if I said, you need rest, and the seventh day is the day of rest, how do you stop to yep. rest? Those who rest, they see, that's why I'm not working. Yep. And then those who are working hard said, well, I rested last year. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know? right. So it wasn't getting sometimes to mm. the specific ones that yeah. needed it. Yeah. So as I was graduating from Vanguard and I'm in the ministry, I took some uh, psychology classes and I started realizing, how can I apply mm. this to an individual? So for me, what I did is I went to Cal State Fullerton, uh, earned my master's degree in psychology, okay. became a psychotherapist, a counselor, marriage family counselor, okay. because I knew I could pastor one-on-one. Right. And so I can pastor by saying, what are your specific issues, Bub? What's going right. on in your life? What's hindering you from having this victorious life with God? Yeah, what's causing you to be yeah. derailed and sidetracked? I have a list. <laughs> for himself, no, is no, what he's talking him. about. Yeah. He's got a list for me. So, yeah. And afterwards, I want those lists, you yeah, know, from mine, both of you. Yeah, I'm sure mine is and, longer. Yeah, my wife and my kids have the list as well for yeah, me. Yes, you know? yes, of course, of course. He hasn't written anything down yet, so that's a good. No, sign it's because he's, he's, he's we're, we're getting to the good stuff. <laughs> it's talking out, about yeah. me yeah. right oh, now. Yeah, in a minute, talking, we'll get to Bob and we'll see what then he's the pad's going to go nuts here. <laughs> yeah. So when when do you think when do you remember actually surrendering your life to Christ and genuinely saying you're saved? Do you think it was early at five? It was five. Okay, uh, but then you just when you say walked away, are you, what do you mean by that? Just sometimes you weren't as on as others or did you literally go I don't I don't like this and then come back to it or was it like oh I forgot for the last three weeks to read my Bible and, and think, pray or come, <laughs> like, what, like which kind of walking away was it <laughs> well I, I differentiate between grace and forgiveness mm-hmm. and forgiveness is our salvation okay so at five I sought forgiveness mm-hmm. at five I remember in church and saying forgive me mm-hmm. Lord I I know what I am now I, I understand I'm a human yeah. and I fail and I come up short mm-hmm. and I need your your forgiveness that's salvation mm-hmm. that's eternal that's something that we're given yep. and we take and we receive from God mm-hmm. and that's forgiveness so I asked forgiveness at about five and I remember it wow. in the in the church I remember sitting there mom and dad coming and hugging with me and uh, and then what I did is I kept having to learn what grace is, and I'm still learning yeah, what sure. grace is. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Grace is what keeps us on track. Okay. Grace is Peter denying Christ, but God's still loving him. Right. And saying, you're the rock. Sometimes you're the rock that walks on yeah. water in a miraculous way because you say, yeah. here, Lord, call me, and I'll jump Amen. out of the boat, which is beautiful. Yeah. And he jumped out of the boat walking on water, yeah, which his... is cool. Yeah. He lost his focus. Yeah. And when he did, he sank. But Jesus came to him, grabbed his hand, drug him to the boat, because Peter said, help me, help yep, me. He yep. sought out. And Jesus drug him. And I picture Jesus being drugged going, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus puts him in the boat. And, ah. But see, that's grace. Yep. Grace keeps us on track. Grace hmm. says, I see who you are. I know who you are. And I love you. Right. But Peter at that moment was being the rock that was sinking. Yeah, the sinking rock, which is not the rock that was going to be built on. Different kind of rock. Different rock. Yeah. Salvation rock yeah. was Peter. Yeah. The rock that says, call me. The rock that says, I'm sad. I'm sorry. I dive off the boat and yeah. swim to you. 
That's the rock. And then grace was given to him again when he swam. Mm-hmm. When he got to the, to the side where Jesus was feeding him and cooking the food, yep. Peter goes, I'm an idiot. And Jesus goes, yes, yeah, you yeah. are. <laughs> but I love you. But, but you're my idiot. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I love I you. I love this idiot. Yeah, That's yeah, grace. Yeah. And grace is what empowers us and strengthens yeah. us. So my journey from five years old on was learning what that grace right. really was. Right. So salvation occurred at five. I never gave up salvation. I think people can lose their salvation, but I, I, I don't like the word lose. Hmm. Never had is what I would say. But well, it's like, that's one thought, yeah. and that's a possibility, yeah. and I embrace that. Yeah. I also think that it's a possibility that someone takes it and jumps out and says, I don't want you anymore. Hmm. If you look at Lucifer, he said, I don't want you anymore. Mm-hmm. It was a conscious decision to leave God. Hmm. So if you look at that, there's a possibility to have a conscious decision to say, I jump out, but you've got to jump. Yeah. You've got to make a really yeah. concerted so I effort. Wanna, I don't want to talk about that all day. No. Because we could go back and we forth. We could go back and forth. <laughs> but my point isn't yeah. that. It's grace. Sure. And sure. it's the fact that we're here in his hands in grace. Yeah. And grace is what empowers us to deal with all the chaos, Absolutely. all the insanity, yeah. all the craziness of this world. So when we look at the uh, at what's going on in this world from the coronavirus yeah. to even more severe situations. That's huge. It's a pandemic. Yeah. It's it's a, a major yeah. impact. It's chaotic. Well, it's one thing because it's different because all of us are thinking about it. Other personal Everyone. things is just your thing. But this is everyone's right. thinking about it and everyone's affected right. by it one way or the other. Everyone. So that's why it becomes, well, what in the world do people do when their government says stay in your apartment and your apartment's four by four? That's right. Like, what? how do we extend grace? How do Christians reach out to these people? What do we say to them? What would you say to them? How we do have, we help? Yeah, we have to start with the reality that where there's humans and, and, and finite and limited yes. awareness. There's that part of us. Then there's the infinite, eternal, perfect. Mm. And that's a paradox. Yep. Because those are two separate issues. Now, those of us that understand the paradox, right. because forgiveness and grace has built the bridge between sure. those two. So we live back and forth. So we look a little psychotic to the world. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? sure, yeah. we yeah. say, death, yeah, that scares me, but oh well. Yeah, yeah. Because we have the eternal. Yeah. When someone is knocked off by the chaos, the insanity of this world, whether it's the coronavirus or it's a molestation, sure. abuse, yep. or whatever, uh, marriages, and we're knocked off and we're knocked back on that bridge, back down to our human side, yep. and we're scared, we join their human side. Mm. We walk alongside them first, mourn with those who mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. We join them in their sadness and sorrow. Mm -hmm. Jesus was filled with compassion and then healed Mm -hmm. all. So when we join them and join ourselves, we have to start with ourselves. Join ourselves when we're knocked off and we're here. Now, when I'm over on this side... That's a weird statement, though. What do you mean join ourselves? Like that's... You're saying things that's not that a weird way. statement. That's a psycho thought <laughs> therapy okay. statement. Same thing to me. Same psycho thing babble. To me. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. Uh, I like, did join say yourself. It. Like I, I kind of know what you're saying. Is you, you, you gotta, you gotta have grace for yourself. That's you right. gotta come. You, that's you gotta, right. Why am I like? Okay, put the oxygen mask on myself. That's first right. So I can. Okay, what's going on? What, what's happening? Let me think through this. Let me be honest with my feelings, and then get get back to understanding the infant, the Lord. And, and then getting getting a word for him or strengthened by him so that we can go help each other. Is that kind of what you're saying? Not kind of. Not that's kind exactly of. That's what, okay. that's what you're saying. All right. Because I just... No, no, yeah. no. That's exactly uh, it. So if you go to what your example was on the plane, yeah, we're always told to put the mask on sure. ourselves first. Sure. Because then you're safe and you're okay to help yeah. everyone else. Right. So we have to honestly evaluate what's going on with us. Right. To join myself is to make this on, honest internal evaluation. Okay. okay. So if we go scriptural and then come back to it practical, Jesus said, come to me, all ye that are weak, weary, and heavy laden, yep. I'll give you rest. Right. You first have to admit you're weak, weary, and heavy laden. Yep. You have to admit and face the fact I'm scared, I'm upset, or this is mm-hmm. going on. Once I know I need oxygen, mm-hmm. and I admit that, I can put the oxygen mask on. Right. I can do something functional right. to take care of me. Then I yeah. can reach out and love others. Yep. But if I don't own it, Jesus, the eternal... The, the infinite cannot touch me and strengthen me. Hmm. Okay. So I have to own that I have a need because he'll he'll accept anyone. Right. Come to me, all ye that are weak, weary, right. late, heavy laid. Not some of you. Yeah. Any of us that are, he will give us rest. So the the goal is then to find what is it that's weak, weary, and heavy laden about me. So okay. I have a specific answer. So for me, 
it's often I get manic, I get, <laughs> I drive my family crazy. Yeah. So for me, when we're closed up and tight, I have to do a lot of walking. So that's a practical human sure. aspect as part of my personality. Yes. So if you can go outside and walk, which we're allowed to do it and yep. stay our distance, yep. then great, go walk, go mm -hmm. move. Uh, if it's in the house and you don't have a place to go, like here in Southern California, we get to go out a lot. Yeah. We're, thank we're used thank, to it. Thank God for that. <laughs> Isn't I, that I awesome? keep thinking of these guys in flats in Paris or in New York on a high rise with one window and you know a room this big and like, yeah. stay home for a while. Like, oh, God. No. <laughs> they maybe, they're used, maybe they like it. I don't know. But it's like, I, like you said, there's most of us want to need to get out and, that's and right. breathe in God's creation a little bit just to just that's sustain right. ourselves. Yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. why most of us live here in that type of beauty, exactly. you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, and others in New York, and they're used to yeah. two months of being snowed in almost, too. I guess so. so. I guess you could get used some to Some of them stuff, have actually literally skills of coping yes. for their human side, their finite side, yeah. to cope, and they know how. And we in California are having to learn yeah. how to cope. Yeah. And, and that's a different issue. Absolutely. My wife, on the other hand, is an introvert. For her, this is heaven. Oh, this is fantastic. This is great. Can we go longer and <laughs> yeah, I could stay yeah, here and be with the dogs yeah, yeah, and be yeah, yeah. reading my books and seeing yeah. So it's each it's very individual. Sure. God's made us each unique. And it's beautiful how we're made. So again, if I'm teaching to masses and I say go walk, someone like my wife will say, Oh no. Yeah. I'd rather sit and read. So we have to personalize it to ourselves yeah. and then to each other. Yeah. So how do I join you? Jesus personalized how he healed, how he interacted. Yep. What he said to P Paul was different than what he said to Peter. Sure. So as a therapist, who's a Christian therapist, who has Christ first before psychology, mm -hmm. I go to each individual and say, how did God make you? Mm -hmm. So we have to ask that same question right. of ourselves in this moment. So how did the, God so make me? So in a sense, what we're, what we're really trying to tell people that are watching is we're not trying to give them a broad thing to go out and walk. But e each individual that is watching this can go back to their community and as much as they can, individualize what each person needs to help them. Because we can't answer it all here. Like you said, to the yep. masses, people are going to go, I'm fine. Like That's my right. wife, I love reading. I'm home a homebody. I'm good. That's you know, right. and, and so we, there's not a prescription for everybody. No. But the, the thing to be Christ-like, to be compassion-like, is, is to make sure that when we do see other people, we see them as individuals and we try to help them wherever they are that's right meet them wherever they, that's wherever right. they are that's the that, that's, that's exactly that, which is well that's, said that's fantastic that's oh that's that. well said yeah. so you look at it it's kind of like food if i say what's your favorite meal yeah it may be different than mine i'm sure it, it would probably be, I'm be, sure it would you be. Know? just looking at it like, <laughs> i can tell you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, i think yeah, i made yeah, yeah. but no it's our meals are different. So I want to give you your meal that you would like for your birthday. Right. And I hope you give me my meal yep. that I want. Yep. But we have to know each other to do that. Amen. Yep. So how do I get to know what the person's needs? Mm. Jesus came to give us what we need. So mm. when we're stuck inside a house, how do we look and say, what do I need manic-wise? Right. What do I need for an introvert? Different. How do I get to know you and encourage you? But it also is the same emotionally. Mm -hmm. Because I have a high tolerance for pain emotionally right. as well as for physical pain. Okay. So for me, I can handle depression or sadness or anxiety mm. much better than someone else that sure. is weaker. So how do I love the weaker mm. one and say, ah, come alongside, as Paul said, mourn with those who mourn, rejoice sure. with those who rejoice. How do I join them in their sadness, mm -hmm. their sorrows? So that what I'm doing is taking them from that human element, yep. that moment that the human side is, is overwhelming them. Love them, join them, so that we can then move across the bridge to eternity to yep. know God is with you. It is yep. good. Good Which things are happening. the heart of the Christian message, right? Which in maybe this is an awakening a little bit because we don't generally do that. We just go about our lives. This right. is kind of forcing us to go. Well, I, I'm just going to hang out with myself. No, I'm, what can I do now to help other people? Even locally, these a lot of people are doing really cool stuff. They may be shut down, but they're talking about other restaurants that are open. They That's wouldn't right. normally do that. That's right. But they're like, hey, you know what? In this time, I'm going to I'm going to have grace, whether they even know that's from the Lord or not. So that's right. something happens when we're pressed. Absolutely. Right? Either one side of us comes out the back, something gets squeezed and something comes out. It, it so, will. Yeah. This is an opportunity for us to say, how can I grow yes. and how can I expand who I am? So we can be locked into the prison of yep. a home or a, a location, which we are to some degree. Yep. So we need to embrace that yep. and come with coping skills to deal with that right. so we don't go crazy. Right. Read books, exercise, reach out through various Zoom or sure. multimedia sure. that way and, and all and maybe connect with family on a regular basis mm -hmm. that we don't usually. Right. But most of our life is filled with tunnel vision 
from here to work, from here to yeah, yeah, exactly. the hospital, yeah. from here to grocery store. Yeah. So this is an opportunity that in some ways God has slowed us down so that we have to look, mm-hmm. ideally. Mm-hmm. We look at ourselves and say, okay, what am I inside feeling? Right. What's going on in me? Right. So that what's being pushed out, if I'm scared, I need to own that mm-hmm. and go ask for help. Yeah. So I get two or three others to pray with me or encourage That's me. Good. And yeah. I find this and say, here, I'm scared. Can you come alongside yeah. me and help me get back to where I need to be? Now, for me, in a, as a therapist, what I do is I look to say, what's the cause of that fear? Hmm. Now, most of the time, it's something simple for all of us. Yeah. If I said to you, you know, Bob, you need to just... Stop being scared. Take a breath. No, and look at your family. Yep. Look around. Yep. Take a walk. Remind yourself who you are. That probably works. But someone that can't do it probably has some injury, some hurt, yeah, some or, damage. Or it could be because I'm just thinking about if you're going to ask me what I was afraid of. <laughs> but if, if I'm in, I, oh, it's, it's a good yeah, one. It's yeah. sharks. It's sharks. <laughs> so, but I, I thought instantly of sharks. It, like yes, in a normal situation, I can walk. He's writing down sharks, and I can, <laughs> I can walk around. Like I can in a normal situation, talk myself. Oh, and here's what the Lord promises. Here's what He says. That's right. I, but if I'm in the water that's and the right. fins going around me, that's right. It's probably a little harder for me to go. The Lord's got this. I'm, he's right. sovereign. So there's acute. It that's seems right. like there's stuff where you can't. Uh, that's right. Because my fear is so welled up. And then there's the kind of the this stuff isn't that bad for me. I mean, it. it no, that's beautiful. That's that's well said. What you're talking about is what I call add-ons. Okay. Oh, I like this. This is good. Add-ons are... I got a lot of add-ons. <laughs> <laughs> we all, yeah. Right now, we yeah. all have okay. a lot of add-ons. Yeah. Add-ons come in three types. Our personality, mm-hmm. which is if you're a perfectionist, then you add to the situation, the circumstance, by saying, I have to do this right or I'm a horrible person. Gotcha. And you manage that. You learn it, yeah. ideally. For me, it's manic. It's high energy. I have to manage that. Otherwise, I'm trying to get involved yeah. and do everything. Yeah. And I can overwork, overcommit, overdo. Yeah. And so... Each of us have to manage our personality. Peter had to learn to manage his. He wanted to please people. Mm -hmm. And as long as he was adding that in, he would then deny Christ. Right. Once he owned that part of himself, then he could hang on the cross and say, I don't deserve right side up. I'm okay not being cared or appreciated by others. That's a good insight. But that's his personality that he had to learn. Paul had to learn to not be so concrete, linear, obsessive, compulsive, you know, and (laughs) driven. Yeah. And, and so he learned to be content. Mm-hmm. That's learned. That's right. personality. Right. You also have the current life stressors, whether it's work, marriage, finances, health, coronavirus, health. Yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. All of those are current stressors. They add to the current situation. So if I'm trying to come here and speak, and I'm, I'm anxious about sitting here with so many people who are bright. You're very bright. Yeah. Bob is. I yeah. love hearing Bob, you guys. Bob, yeah. Bob yeah, has I, a good heart. Yeah. And <laughs> bless his heart. Wait, wait. Just, cut, just, cut. To make sure, just wanted to make sure you were still here. I forgot you were there. Yeah. Grace. Grace. <laughs> yeah, so you're so okay, yeah, you're in the middle of that and you're stressed out and you, but but there's a we uh, when we had Pastor Mike on here, he said something I thought that was insightful about fear. It's it's the what ifs. That we can yes. create basic yes. on our add-ons. That's and, another way of kind of saying but the that, what if, our personality. The what-ifs sometimes are part of who we are, whether it's personality sure. or our circumstances. Sure. And it's also historical. So you have current stressors that are in us right. that we have to deal with. I have to deal yeah. with paying rent. I have to pay yeah. my mortgage. I have, to, have to care for the family. Yeah, to, you have to, to know how to manage that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Then you also have historical, whether they're traumas historical mm. or learned historical. Right. If our family was raised in a home that said everything will have a, has a place and everything will be in its place, right. and that's your learning. Yeah. Now, when it's not in place, you're anxious. Yeah. Or when, yeah, when your wife doesn't adhere to those. Doesn't do. <laughs> Wait, now you're angry. Yeah, now you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> you know Go what from to internal yes. shame yeah. and anxiousness to Why external. Why don't you know that everything has its place? <laughs> oh, you weren't raised the same way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's add-ons. Yes. So when we have a current stressor of any type, because living here on it's this just, earth is chaotic. You got them. Yeah. And it's, you know, not orderly because God's yeah, got right. an order, but this world is not yet. So when we're living with those add-ons, it adds to the stressors. So when we divide those out and we start looking at historical ones, traumas, yep. then the traumas need healed. The historical learning needs retaught, relearned, reprogrammed mm-hmm. in the brain so you develop a new perception. Yep. If you're in current stressors, you need to know and build coping skills to know how to deal with the current stressors right. in life and how to separate them out. Personality, you need to own your personality and realize God made you. 
it is not a yeah. bad personality. He did not say, oops. He said it is really, mm. really good. Mm. Yeah. And so he, each of us are masterpieces made by the master. Sure. We need to celebrate although, that. Although living in a fallen state. But We're in a like, fallen yeah, state. Yeah, but Some yeah. of us are marred, starred, and painted over. Yeah. <laughs> but what's cool, yeah. and some of us have done it to ourselves. Yes, We've yeah, marred ourselves. Most of that, yeah, that, that's, that, that's Sometimes true. sin I'll, committed unpack, against unpack us. Unpack that, those three again. I thought that was really, really good because I think this can be really helpful. So what do you have? What's the best practice to do when you talk about this? The stressors, the add-ons, the personality, the history. What, what's the? Give me like a sentence behind or yeah. like thirty seconds behind each one of like. Okay, what can I do if I have pers- personality? Yeah. You have to first own and recognize who I, you are, I who am God made. This, is, who, this okay. is me. This is God. Okay. It's not an excuse to say, yeah. "Well, deal with it." This yeah. is who I am. It's a responsibility that I'm given this personality. Yeah. How am I using it? How am I embracing yeah. it and managing it? And is there it? good and bad to that? There is. Peter, out of control, wanted to please everyone. Right. So around the fire, he didn't want to be abandoned right. and rejected. Right. But under control, he's the rock. Right. So the sin, there's a, uh, I can't just say that's who I am. No, and there's I get no to, responsibility behind that. I get to do with what I, I do. No. Because there's some parts of sinful parts of my personality. That's correct. But I'm try- so I'm trying to find ways to balance that, own it. Can admit it and get help. Get help around it, or have people. Or if do I, I don't know how to manage it, right. and I can't do it on my own, then we get help. Okay. That's and why I called Randy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why, because because he helped me. Right. I need a friend to help. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And we need it from each other for sure. We, we so need I wasn't it. enough. No. <laughs> so, yeah. You you were part of the problem. <laughs> yes. He said. No, 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 no. Sharks, problems. shark, and problem. <laughs> Okay. okay, so there's there's personality, yeah. there's circumstances, and there's wound, or there's history. There's history, there's history. Right? Yeah. So yeah. you so. did the personality one, and now the um, circumstances, like you said, I mean, I think this is the big question. What do we do? The whole We're in a foxhole at home. The whole world's caving in on us. How, how do we... How do we take all those add-ons? And just... all, the, all the current life stressors, whatever mm-hmm. they are, yep. and in particular, we'll talk about coronavirus because yep. it's, it's compressing sure. us, yep. it's oppressing us. So that's a current life stressor. You have to divide it out and look at it and put it in a different perspective, okay. which is what you guys have done here often, mm-hmm. and I've heard, and it's wonderful. It's look at it first. How is this impacting me? Right. What is going on internally? I'm feeling crazy. I'm feeling in prison. I'm feeling locked yeah. down. And God is God. Eternal for me, yeah. I know that God is God and it's going to be okay. Right. Whether it's okay here on earth yeah. or heaven, yeah. it'll eventually, eventually yeah. <laughs> it'll be okay. Yeah. That's faith. Yeah. So when we're stuck in that, we apply faith. But mm-hmm. we have to own it first. Again, we have to again admit my weaknesses, my shortcomings, yep. in a sense, yep. come to you know, so we can come to Jesus with all of our yep. heavy burdens. So how do I go to each other with our heavy burdens? Mm-hmm. So the current stressors, recognizing how I'm experiencing this right. stress, this compression, this prison, mm-hmm. to recognize it now allows me to come with coping skills, okay. along with the ultimate coping skill, which is reality of, of heaven. Yeah, absolutely, the hope. Of but heaven. we need coping skills on earth. So yep. how do we deal with those from uh, reading books. How do we uh, say, I want to learn something new. Mm-hmm. So right now it's time to learn a new language. Amen. Yeah. Uh, right now it's time to know how to hear and read books, new books, other yeah. things that will expand yeah. me as a person with my gifts and talents that God's yeah. given me. How can I reach out to my neighbor in a different way than I've ever reached out before? Yeah. How can I expand and let them know I love them and understand their yeah. problems? If I have an older person, can I send them a note to say, hey, do you need someone to go to the yeah. grocery store? What do you need? You locked up. Yeah, it's not so, considering yourself, but considering other, exactly. other people. That's the stuff that gets you out. Because the, the tendency for a lot of people, when this could be their personality, or maybe not, is is now is not the time to run and hide. That's right. I mean, for in, anyone, you, the, the, it's not ever good to isolate. I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. you need to mm-hmm. you know, get away with the Lord or whatever, or get away from the stuff. But to, to be isolated is not the answer to any of the stuff you got. But the, where's... What we have to start with, you're right, yeah. and I agree 100%, but what we have to start with is recognizing how I'm experiencing it. Okay. Because so you, if I so, don't so own I'm the pressures, scared. yes. I, this, is, this isn't, I don't like this. Yes. It's bothering me. I just want, uh, like that kind of stuff, just admitting yeah, even, where it even is. Yeah, even that. I'm a, I feel like yeah. I'm in prison. I yeah. feel angry. I yeah. feel intense. There's a difference between describing my experience and demonstrating hmm. my experience. Hmm. To demonstrate would be to go, ah! yeah, yeah, just lash out and lash yeah, out, yeah, yeah. To, or or go depression. Yeah, that's a demonstration. Yeah. 
a description would be to say, I feel like yelling, I feel like screaming, I feel overwhelmed. Yep. When I describe what I'm hmm. experiencing, I now can ask for help. Hmm. So that if I'm sick, That's I good. call two or three others to come and pray with me, encourage me, help me. Right. Man, Bob, I need help. Yep. I, I can't seem to move. Help me. Yep. I'm locked up. I'm, and I describe what I'm experiencing. Yep now allows you to reach out to me, even if it's some distance. Yep. You guys have a great interaction between you, and yet you guys are drastically different. We are. Yeah. <laughs> you know? we praise are. the Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord for that difference. <laughs> exactly. You know? yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's in that difference that you're able to help him when and he gets course. stuck and he's able to help you. Absolutely. So this is a time, as we own who we are, we can reach out. Or we can look to reach out to you mm-hmm. and connect with you and help you identify right. what's hindering you. So that we can then move out and mm. expand ourselves and not get stuck. To me, if we look at it theologically, the moment that evil can oppress me, chaos can oppress yep. me and hold me down, chaos, evil, darkness yep. wins. Yep. The moment I can own what I'm experiencing and put it to the light and say, my heart is heavy unto death, yep. help me. Yep. The that's moment a, that's I can powerful. It, yeah, own it. Yeah. Jesus owned it. He said, "It's heavy unto yeah, death." Yeah. Come and pray, you guys. Well, no. then you hear that. Pa- then you hear that passage that he is the uh, that he has transferred us from the domain of darkness. Yes. Into the beloved Son's kingdom. Like, oh my! There, so you just unlocked a verse for me. Oh, good. <laughs> because that's, good. that's I, Yeah, that's what he's done. Yes. It's not just ultimate darkness. It's uh-uh. darkness right here too. It's here on yeah. earth. It's now. Yeah. It's in the chaos of this world. We as Christians are bringing, in a sense, because we have a bridge that we can live yeah. on. The, the paradox of human mm-hmm. finiteness with yep. the infinite, yep. eternal, perfect. We have the bridge, and it's grace, it's yep. faith, yep. it's forgiveness, yep. it's love. When we walk that bridge and bring it down to this world, yes. that's when we're presenting yeah, to it's them. It's that, that image, right? The it is that image. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And that's sad. It's an entity, and it made me think yeah, of yeah. Well, that's <laughs> Sistine what Chapel. That's, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm talking about. This but, is humanity, God touching humanity. At it that is. Point. Yeah, yeah. But he also uses us to touch humanity. Yeah, well, that's what, which course, is really weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is that, I, that, that's I can't how, understand. That's how he it. chose to do it. <laughs> I, I, I give in to it. Yeah. But that's the paradox. Yeah. When we have a paradox that way, that takes us this way, it takes paradoxes to resolve a paradox. Hmm. Paradox cannot be resolved by human mind and human thinking. Okay. So infinity, finiteness, sin, being perfect. Yeah. They can't come together like matter and antimatter can't come right. together. It's a cataclysmic right, response. Right, right. You know, it's, <laughs> it's over. It's, how that works, I don't yeah, know. I don't but, but evil and, and, and perfect can't come together because that's, that's a paradox. Right. However, paradox of love, paradox of grace, paradox of forgiveness, yep. paradox of faith bonds those. So yep. we, when we live within those, mm-hmm. we bring for those moments that we're yes. connecting with yep. all that yep. well. We're yeah. bringing God's anointing to earth. Yeah, that's, why it's so, that's why it's so beautiful when that truth, goodness, and beauty meet through Christ, through us. That's where lots of eyes open and lots of people start moving toward the Lord. And that's yeah. where when I'm sometimes knocked off that moment sure. of employing yeah. those four yeah. things, I need someone else to come to me. Absolutely. Or I need to own it and say, I'm lost, I'm sick, yeah. I'm hurting, I can't yeah. see it. I'm, I'm even questioning the salvation of forgiveness. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's Satan, that's evil, chaos, challenging, like Jesus in, when he was challenged and said, throw yourself down. Yep. And he goes, get behind yeah, me. Like, yeah, At yeah. that moment, we're all going to be challenged when we're th- stressed, yep. when we're anxious. Yep. And we have to know how to seek help and own it. So there's a there's a there, there's a, a kind of a paradigm thinking here because for for the believer, even how Christ answered when he was being tempted by the devil, he used scripture. Yes. Uh I do that as a believer. It strengthens me, obviously, a lot. I'm in the Word. The Word gives me hope because I believe it mm-hmm. and changes my behaviors, my values, and, mm-hmm. and then I can get through, you know, some emotional stuff. People that don't have the Lord, right, 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 they they got to deal with a whole other way. They, what, I don't. Where's the what? What? How do you help a person like that who's Keep in mind, keep in mind that that's all of us can get knocked down there. No, I get, there. I get that. Okay, I, that I just want to make sure yeah, we say yeah. that first because yeah. it's not. But that. I have something to come to clean but back we do. to and feel exactly. Yeah. I have to do as Jesus did. He was filled with compassion yeah. before he healed all. Right. Empathy is the basis of grace. Mm. When I go to someone that's scared and, and uncertain yeah. and this world is, is oppressing and, and attacking them, whether it's 
the pandemic or anything. Anything else, yeah. How do I come alongside them and love them? Yep. How do I come alongside and say, I know it's scary. Mm-hmm. And I understand because I yep. get scared in this moment. Sure. It's, it's what Jesus modeled when John the Baptist, when he was facing death, mm-hmm. and he sent a disciple to Jesus and said, are you the one? Mm-hmm. Now, John the Baptist is one of the weirdest of weirds. Yeah, well, yeah. And, <laughs> but no greater man born to him than, of a woman. So, None. Uh, yeah, so he got this great, great He has man. a crisis of and faith. And he's like, please, I just before I die, I, I, I got to know if this is the right guy. <laughs> yeah. Did I live yeah. my life right? Yeah. Yes, I saw God. Yeah. Yes, I heard God. Yes, I yeah. saw the dove. Yes, I proclaimed you. Yep. Yes, I'm your cousin. Yes, yeah, I know yeah. who you are. <laughs> I think I'm in. I think I'm in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you the one? Yeah. So we all feel that. The difference is, is we have answers like Christ of grace. Mm-hmm. Now, Jesus could have shamed him. Yeah. Come on, don't you know better? Of yeah, you I idiot. Am. You know yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You've talked. You know yeah. what it is. But no, no, no. He quoted the Old Testament. Yeah. Well, and he, yeah, and he, 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 at that point, he becomes a beautiful evidentialist, right? Because he says, look at what I've done. He does. Look at, look, there's my answer. Who's, he, who's, he quotes he, the Old yeah. Testament in an evidential way. Yeah. To say, tell him what you see. Exactly. Yeah. What you see, the blind. What had been see. prophesied, what yes. he actually came and did, and then he's like, he knows that. Tell him what he tell How him. do we do that? Yeah. That's the Whether that's the for question. each other How do we do that? or with the other. Yeah. We come alongside first and join their emotional pain, hmm. their fears. We join them and say, Yeah, as Jesus did with Lazarus' hmm. grave, we cry first, yep. we weep first, hmm. we join first. The only way we can connect with each other is to join where the person's at. Hmm. So if I'm trying to see through your eyes, I need to take time to say, what are you seeing? What are you experiencing? What's yeah. going on in your world? Yeah. Let me join that so that I can guide you to more hope, hmm. to something that I have that's yeah. awesome. But if I start by saying, wow, you got to have faith like I do, yeah. I am you shaming the person. I am. Immediately. I separate. Yeah. I'm separate. Yeah. I'm shaming yeah. them. Yeah. I'm not giving them grace. Yeah. I'm shaming. So when we are doing it with each other mm-hmm. as Christians... And someone's having a weak moment, yep. a John the Baptist yep. moment, yep. I need to join them and say, I understand. Mm-hmm. And here, let me give you some hope. Yep. Let me guide you. Yep. Let me join you first. Or as someone who's a non-believer. So when we're under stress, we all go to our protective patterns. Mm-hmm. We all go to our personalities. We all go to try to figure out how do I stabilize? How do I make sense out of this world? Okay. Randy, how do Randy, I find safety? As you continue, I want you to go toward what that escalation does to you because that was a big uh, learning for me is what happens when you get escalated? What what goes on in your brain? Where, where does your mind go? Uh, you, you tend to think, wow, this is something I really believe in. And, I, and I'm, I'm thinking very clearly because this is really important when really that's it's kind of the opposite that's happening, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, God's made us so beautifully mm-hmm. that I love studying the brain. I love studying science. Sure. I don't always like other people's interpretations <laughs> of science, but the science that's is all, beautiful. It points to God, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. So when you study the brain, you realize that what we're doing always is looking for danger or safety. Okay. And we're in a constant state of looking for danger or safety. If it's safe, well, good. We just flow along. We're mm-hmm. okay. Things go well. If it's danger, God's made us so beautifully that our brain escalates. Hmm. We start going along in the amygdala, the hypothalamus, and other parts of the brain, and it escalates to say, is this a bear? Mm-hmm. How dangerous is it? And some of the add-ons will increase that intensity of the moment. When we start increasing, the brain consumes 20% of your oxygen, 20% of your energy. Hmm. So when we increase in danger, the brain goes offline so that it takes the oxygen and the energy and adds to your muscles Hmm. so you can fight, flight, or when it overwhelms you, you freeze. Mm -hmm. You get locked up. But your fight, flight, or freeze is a result of a danger that feels Hmm. above like a 5 on a scale of 10, with the 10 being a grizzly bear after you. So you're, you're... Going and you're going to fight or flight, but the brain has to go offline because God's made it so beautifully that the added oxygen and energy added to adrenaline, we lift cars off of people. So when there's a car that needs to be lifted or a bear to run from, that's awesome. But when we have these add-ons that go into it, now what happens is we're brain is going offline and we're trying to make a putt with my buddies for 12 inches, and it looks like it's 20 feet, right, and I'm right, shaking, right, right. you know, for $5 yeah, or to yeah. win, or a free throw, yeah. or stage anxiety. Stage fright, stage fright is actually 
our brain has gone and said, I may fail, I may forget, mm. this may happen. And it goes offline because it feels like it's a bear. Yeah. And now we're not thinking clearly. Our cognitive functioning, our frontal lobes are not functioning yep. well at all. Um, you know, you see it in free throws. Guys can make uh, an 85, 90% in practice and they go to the game and they're at 70%, yep. 60%. Yep. It's actually the danger that the brain's perceiving. Hmm. So what's going on now with all the oppression is natural. We're seeing and we're saying it's a bear. And as long as people are saying that uh, you're going to die, two million are going to die, yeah. one million are going to die, if we don't have hope, we then escalate. And we all will because yep. that is scary. Yep. And it is a possibility. Yep. But it's not a bear. Yeah. Now, yep. it is to the person that is facing it and is sick. It's in the ICU unit. It's a bear. And as a yep. Christian, we go and say, yes, it's scary, and we have the ultimate. But in the brain, we have to calm the brain down. Mm. We have to say, is it an add-on? Is it historical? Is it a trauma? Is it reminding yep. me of other traumas where I was sick, where I saw my son or daughter right. die, where I had yep. seen death? Is it a current life stressor? I'm worried and anxious on finances, mm -hmm. on hope. I'm, I'm isolating. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And if it is those things, or is it just my personality that I'm going stir crazy being here, yep. those all trigger the brain to go to danger. Once it goes to danger and our brain's offline, we're not thinking yep. as well. Yep. So we need to take a deep breath. And part of that is forcing oxygen back to the brain. Mm. So meditation, reading scripture, stopping and being still and knowing he is God. Yeah. All those are things that actually physiologically cause the brain to get oxygen. Yeah. Which is wonder how God puts that in his word. Here's some actions to do. I, I heard even when you stand and hold your arms up and sing, well, I mean, whether it's you're, mm -hmm. you're praising God or you're just singing an Aerosmith song. Right, right. right. But they did a test before these people went on interviews. Mm -hmm. And all the ones that did that scored so much better on the interview. It's like you wonder why God says lift your hand. and But he's doing all these things because he, he, he made you wonderfully. That's he right. knows what to do. So taking a deep breath, being still, knowing he's God, meditating on scriptures, they all do actual physical things to you. That's right. Which is amazing. That's amazing. It's to calm yeah. the brain so the brain goes back online. Yeah. So Moving Randy, your hands pushes the adrenaline out right. so your brain will go back yeah. online. Randy, incredible. what do we lose when we become myopic like that? What what what? Uh, it's the full, uh, our full intelligence, our full uh, ability to cope with things, or our compassion. I mean, uh, when you become myopic, what are we, what are we missing? Yeah. It, whenever we start escalating, mm -hmm. we immediately go to tunnel vision. Yeah. And and that's okay because you're looking to run from the bear. Yeah, you say, how do I get away? Be, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, jumping that gorge. Yeah, I'm I don't care what for. I'm going to have a lunch anymore. Uh -oh. it's, it's, yeah. No lunch. No. Yeah. So we've gone to tunnel vision, and by taking breath, slowing down, socializing, fellowshipping, uh, knowing and walking, moving around, yep. we're actually trying to spread that tunnel vision and look so that we have peripheral mm. vision, so that we can see broader. Yeah. And also so that we can see depth, mm -hmm. because what we also do is not just myopic in the sense of losing, yeah. you know, because I can't see my but hand there's over nothing here. forward. There's we no can't hope. see forward. Right, yeah. We see right in front of us yeah. five, ten yeah. feet. Now, this is amplifying that, which already occurs for all of us right. that haven't resolved traumas or history or past yeah. teachings of yeah. the, everything has to be in its place. Right. Those types of teaching can cause that same tunnel right. vision. So tunnel vision limits our perspective, our brain goes offline, mm -hmm. we don't see depth, and we need someone to come alongside to say, I know. Yep. The little kid that says, you hate me, mm -hmm. you won't give me a cookie. Yep. For me to go, I know you want that cookie, yeah. don't yeah, you? Yeah. It'd be really good, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah. And no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let me hug you, but, I'll be but with you're not yeah. going yeah. to get the cookie. We all need the yeah. same thing. I need someone to be with me in my hurts, my owies. A absolutely. If a little kid falls at uh, the park mm -hmm. and he scrapes his knee and he runs to his mom or dad he'll run all the way there and when he gets close he'll start to limp and grab his leg right, right you know right and if a parent says i saw you running go play yeah. you're not hurt yep. the kid will limp all day 
That's interesting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you've if never you, addressed the one thing. Uh-uh. If you just address and said, I'm so sorry you're hurt, let me kiss your leg. Exactly. Hey, mar- miracle. Miracle. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sit here. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't play. Yeah. I think I'm okay now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. I don't know who told me this one time, but a friend of mine said, when, when the girls, because I've got a house full of girls, uh, I got a house full of girls. When, when, when they say there's a monster under the bed, make sure you look under the bed yes. before you encourage them that there isn't a monster under the bed. What, what we're also saying, and I'll go with that a little further, and what we're saying in that is that they need to have trust that we care. And if we build trust, that will build to faith. So someone that doesn't know how to have faith, they're lacking trust. Mm -hmm. I'm building trust in a little kid Mm -hmm. to say, I am here. So they can take it and say, God is here, something I can't see. Which is great, because I think faith is synonymous with the word trust. So what you're really is building their faith, their trust. You are. Yeah. So my daughter was in our front room uh, uh, near the front door, and she heard a noise at 2 in the morning, and she was probably at the time maybe 9. Yeah. And uh, she called and said, hey, Dad, there's someone outside. So I came. Yeah, I don't want to get up at 2 in the morning. I can tell you, I'd rather be sleepy. But I got up, turned all the lights on, walked all around the house, looked at everything, came back, turned it off, said, would you like the lights on? She goes, yes, please. So I left them on, scratched her back and prayed with her and sat there until she fell asleep. And I said, no, it's all okay. Now, I wasn't lying. There was no one out there. But there is danger out there because there's a lot of... People driving sure. and out at night. But, but her, at specific, that moment, her specific question and yes. her fear was dealt with. Yes. And I dealt with that, cared for her, loved her. And now as an adult psychologist, uh, yes. Dean at Vanguard, yeah. she travels yeah. the world. Yes, <laughs> yeah. another psycho. Yeah. She travels the world over. I think I, I encouraged I think she, her too I think much. She's okay. I think she's fearless. <laughs> awesome. So, Bob, do you have you have anything else you yes, want to add here? Yes. Okay. You started, Randy, you started to talk about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. And you talk about circumstances, right? He was feeling the weight of his circumstances, much like people are home right now, alone in a foxhole. What what how can how would you describe that uh, Jesus response to that circumstantial pr- pressures and what could we learn from that? Well, when I look at it from the human behavioralist and I study Jesus in that moment, his capillaries broke mm-hmm. from stress and duress, and they filled his sweat glands with blood. That happens under great duress. Mm-hmm. That is anxiety. That is heaviness. Obviously, he said his heart was heavy mm-hmm. unto death. So for us to know we feel heavy, to know we're anxious, to know we're having these emotions is not sin, or mm-hmm. I'd have to say Jesus sinned, mm-hmm. and I can't do that. Uh, I can look at it and say, wow, he modeled how to deal with it. Yep. And what he modeled was to talk to his father mm-hmm. and say, wow, this is heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting yep. this battle of if I go to the cross, I go to yep. hell and have to fight right. hell. Yep. And if I don't, everyone else does. Mm. So he was in this horrible paradox and heaviness. And he also said, come and pray with me, you guys. I need you. Now, those guys failed him. They, they didn't stay they, awake. Uh, yeah, they... but, but it's an example for us that we sure. need each other. Sure. How do we reach out? Sure, it would have been helpful. If it they, would have been they helpful. Woke up, yeah. So how do we reach out? So we have to own that we have these emotions, that we have this overwhelmness, mm-hmm. that our heart is heavy. Again, it goes back to come to me, all you either yep. weak, weary, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Yep. So it's owning that we're weak and weary. It's owning. It's okay that we feel these emotions. Yep. It's what we do with them is the determining factor mm-hmm. of health or unhealth. Yep. So owning them, aware of them, seeking out others to help me. If I can't get help, if I can't get through it, then often that's some injury or harm that impedes me mm-hmm. from moving forward. Mm-hmm. And that's where, as a Christian therapist, I help people that get stuck and can't take right. the Bible, can't take right. pastoral teaching or a good teaching and a good book and an anointed right. book and heal. Something's hindering them. Mm-hmm. So I walk them through it right. personally. Right. For all of us in this earth and this time now, we need to be able to own what we're feeling and reach out to each other. And when we can feel his grace, his strength and one another together, then we can reach out to others mm-hmm. and care and join them empathetically, join them in their their hurt, their pain, their fears, and walk with them so that we can walk across that divide mm-hmm. of finiteness and infiniteness mm-hmm. and from our human to our perfect. But 
we get those moments to feel that, and that's what our opportunity is right now. I love that. Uh, we do, as you know, we do this thing called mm-hmm. one thing in under two <clears throat> minutes. We'd like for you to share a word of encouragement, wherever, whatever that may be on your heart. Look at that camera and just go for it when you want to. Well, first off, that's pressure for two minutes uh, <laughs> and under two. Jesus made us and said it is good. In Genesis, God made us and said it is good. And in Genesis, the whole point of that is beautiful, that all of creation is good. And we need to stop and take a moment and take that in and see the beauty around us and realize that this that's going on is smaller than God, that there is a greater being, there's a greater process out there as we look at our world and see the birds and see all that's going on and stop and realize we are masterpieces. We are made by the master. We are of value and worthwhile. And how do we take care of ourselves in this time? So you are a masterpiece made by the master. You may be marred, scarred, or painted over, but the master still lives and can restore us back to what he wants us and we are called to be. So don't forget in the middle of seeing a mar, a scar, a painted over, a damage, that you have value. You are a child of God with great value. Love that. Randy, appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. Thanks for helping us through this this time. Uh, We'll see you guys next time. God bless you. Bobby, adios. All right. Adios. Blessings.